The lessons we have this morning are from the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. The 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke is one of my favorite passages. I've said this quite a few times. You all must think I have like a hundred favorite passages in the Bible. I really don't. 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, the 25th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, uh, Philippians chapter 4, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 21. Um, there's some other ones that are up there. Isaiah is good. But the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke can't be piecemealed, right? This morning we get verses 1 through 10. And we miss the next story. And what's the next story? Oh, come on. Somebody has to know what the next story is in Luke chapter 15. Say louder, Kurt. It's the story of the prodigal son, right? You all know the story of the prodigal son. The boy that says, my dad's dead. He goes to him. He says, give me what's mine. He, the father gives it to him. He goes off. He squanders it on. What does he squander it on? That's a sermon for a different time. We're not getting there. Um, but he wastes all of his money and he goes hungry and he winds up feeding pigs. And he winds up going back home. And then the father has throws a party. And the older son doesn't come in because he's upset that the father gives a party for the younger son who ran away and has now come home. There's all this moving around. The big thing about this chapter is there is a party when things are found, right? But it's also about repentance. Because it says at the end of each of our little snippets this morning that there is joy in heaven over one sinner who repents over those who need no repentance, right? And there's joy in the angels that... that Talk about this one who has repented. And what does it mean to repent? Turn, Turn not away, around. Right. A great concept. Right? The actual physical words for repentance in the Greek and the Hebrew are a physical connotation of a physical turning around. Re a reorientation of our lives. It's all about us making a decision to not look this way, but to look this way. Or to not do this thing, but to do this thing. So I have to ask you, and you're not allowed to answer, Kurt. <laughs> or Helen. <laughs> These are the two people I know that have already read my blog this morning, and the answer's in my blog. So if you've read my blog, you're not allowed to answer either. But I have to ask you, if it's about repentance and it's about us choosing the ways that we go and what we do, how does a sheep repent? Uh. <laughs> We're all, I'm sorry I've been. <laughs> right? Oh, come on, it's funny, really. I mean... <laughs> And if a coin could do this, right? A coin, an inanimate object. How does a coin repent? I promise I'll change. Right? Uh... But in the reality of all of this, can a sheep repent? And can a coin repent? Can the sheep even find itself? How many of you have ever worked with sheep before? Sheep are really dumb animals. <laughs> Aren't they? I mean, they'll do what they... They'll follow each other. They'll drink from... Um, if there's a, a nice flowing stream here and there's a mud puddle over here and one of them sees the, somebody, one of them drinking from the mud puddle, they'll all gather around the mud puddle and drink from the mud puddle rather than come to this stream. They follow each other. And they get into ruts. And they do things that aren't necessarily aren't necessarily the brightest things in the book, which really should make us all squirm and, and, and wriggle around in our seats when Jesus refers to us as his sheep, right? We're all his followers that would do whatever we want to if we're not actually listening to the shepherd and going where he's leading us to go, right? And that's exactly what that means. But a sheep is not going to be able to find itself. And these two stories, one of them is ridiculous, and one of them is what every one of us would do. And both of them are about people who are on the lowest portion of the status of the society of this time, right? 
Here, the first one, we have a shepherd, and he has how many sheep? One hundred. He has a hundred sheep. And he counts them one day, and he gets to ninety-nine. And so what does he do? He locks the ninety-nine up in a pen, makes sure that they're safe, and he goes out to look for the other one, right? Who said that? What does our reading say? He left the ninety-nine in the... Wilderness. Wilderness. He left them where they could get eaten by wolves or other predators. He left them alone on the mountainside where they could wander away and get lost themselves to go search for one sheep. Now, when Jesus asked his people this parable, they're all going to go, well, no shepherd in their right mind is going to leave 99 sheep in the wilderness to be eaten or to stray away themselves to go find one sheep. That's, that's not good loss management, is it? I mean, <laughs> really? I still have 99. I'm still on the, on the upper grade of this thing. One's not going to hurt me that much. The shepherd, though, leaves the 99 and goes to search for the one. And the woman turns the house over and over and over again to find this one coin, right? This, and it's a woman who has how much money? Ten silver coins. And she's lost one. Ten silver coins is probably nothing. It's like ten pennies today. She has no money. And it doesn't say anything about a husband or a son or a man. And again, I say this because of the society, right? It does, she does Not that she needs that in today's society, but in that time when Jesus was telling this story... If a woman has ten coins and she doesn't have a man to take care of her, she's basically, she's below the shepherd. And the shepherd is, 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 is dirt. Right? You, as a shepherd, you couldn't be a, a witness in the courts in Jesus' day. Because your, your word meant nothing. You were, you were the low, you were, to equate this, and I, and I mean no offense to any used car salesman, but, to equate it, it would be a used car salesman in our in our day and age. You know, someone who who would uh, you know is going to sell you something, right? Because I got to get rid of it, right? Anyone who would tell you a story to get you to buy something—that's what a shepherd was in those days. And shepherd would steal other people's sheep. They were not the most trustworthy people. They were not the high standing part of society. They were looked down upon. They were not invited to the big crust parties. And this woman was even lower than that. But this is the kicker on this story, right? Because the story is not about the sheep, and the story is not about the coin, and the story is not about the sheep choosing anything or the coin choosing anything. It's about the fact the grace of God works through everything. And God is the shepherd, and God is the woman. And in the story of the prodigal son, the story is not about the son, which is the reason I don't like the title of prodigal son for that story, right? Because the story starts out, each of these stories starts out. There was a shepherd who had a hundred sheep. There was a woman who had ten coins. There was a man who had two sons. It's not about the younger son or the older son. And it's not about what they do. They play an integral part in the story, yes. But the stories themselves are about how God is going to look everywhere and anywhere to find us when we stray away. It's about a father who loves their children so much that they go to any length to find them when they have strayed away. It's about a father that will do whatever it takes to make sure that everything is present. And when it is, you throw a party. Because it's the joy and the overbounding grace about how God loves each and every one of us so much that He will not rest until all the sheep are found. Until all the coins are found. Until all of the children are included in the party. And that is how much God loves you. And it's not about who you are or what you've done or what you're going to do. It's all about God's grace.
And if today wasn't the 15th anniversary of the attack on our country, that would be enough. But I have to say that grace abounds in ways that none of us can understand. I have. How many of you know where you were 15 years ago? I mean, I can, can name it right off the top of your head. Some of these kids, you know, incoming freshmen are hearing about this event as a completely historical event. It happened before they were born. September 11th, 2001. The attack on the Twin Towers. How many of you, I already asked how many of you knew where you were and you raised your hands. How many of you know, though, who Wells Crowther is? I'd never heard this name before this morning either. Wells Crowther was a 24-year-old uh, broker who worked in tower number two on the 86th floor. Those of you who know anything about the attacks, the plane hit the building between the 78th and the 86th floor. Wells made his way down, helped people out, actually carried people out of the building and helped get people up to 18 reports I've heard. The man exited the building with people and went back in. He didn't look at who they were. He didn't care who they were. He helped them get out of the building. And when he helped those people that he got out of the building, out of the building, he went back into the building to get more. And he brought those people out. And what did he do? He went back into the building to get more. His body was found on March in March of 2002 after they completely got the rubble dug up with other firefighters and first responders who had got buried in the rubble of the building. A man died saving people. Because he wasn't giving up on looking for what was lost. And that's exactly how God lives for each and every one of us. These stories are all about a father that loves his children so much that no matter what it takes, he's going to do it. It's a story about a father that showers grace on his children, even when they stray away, even when they get lost, because that's what he's always going to do. God loves each and every one of us so much that his grace will never end. And he will always look for you wherever you might be lost.